Hi everyone! Today we're going to be talking about trends in the periodic table. As you can see, the periodic table is organized by placing the elements in order of increasing atomic number. The shape of the table places atoms with similar properties in the same column. A period consists of all the elements in one horizontal row. There are seven periods in the periodic table, and generally from left to right, the elements go from solid to liquid to gas at room temperatures. The elements on the left side of the period tend to form more ionic bonds, while the elements on the right side form more covalent bonds. A group consists of all the elements in a vertical column. There are 18 groups in the periodic table, which includes the D block elements, but not the F block. The elements within a group all have similar physical or chemical properties. This is because they all contain the same number of electrons in their outermost electron shell. The first trend in the periodic table that we're going to talk about is the atomic radius, or size, of the element's atom. As you go down the group, the atomic size of each element increases, because more electrons and electron shells are added, making the atom larger. As you go from left to right across a period, the atomic radius will decrease. This is because the nucleus of the atom gains protons from left to right which increases the attraction of the nucleus and electrons, bringing the particles closer together. Now knowing this trend, which atomic radius do you think is larger? Fluorine or bromine? Boron or oxygen? Pause the video until you have an answer. If you think bromine is larger than fluorine, you're correct. If you think boron is larger than oxygen, you're correct. Another trend is the ionic radius. In a neutral atom, the atomic radius and ionic radius are the same, but many elements exist as cations or anions. Those atoms will gain or lose electrons in their valence shells to get a full valence shell. Atoms on the left side of the table tend to lose electrons. Losing those electrons will empty their outermost shell, making their new valence shell the one closer to the nucleus, effectively making the atoms smaller. Atoms on the right side of the table tend to gain electrons to fill their valence shell. Since the atom doesn't lose or gain an orbital shell, the size stays relatively the same. So, as you travel down a group, the ionic radius will generally increase, just like the atomic radius. Now knowing this trend, which ionic radius do you think is smaller? Potassium or sodium? Iodine or chlorine? Pause the video until you have an answer. If you think the sodium ion is smaller, you're correct. If you think the chlorine ion is smaller, you're correct. Next up is the first ionization energy. It is the energy needed to remove the outermost electron from a neutral atom in the gas phase. The ionization energy will increase from left to right in a period and from bottom to top in a group. The energy needed to remove an electron will increase as more electrons are added to the valence shell across the period. However, when going down a group, the energy required is lower because all of the extra orbital shells will begin to shield the valence electrons from the attractive forces of the nucleus. Now knowing this trend, which first ionization energy will be larger? Carbon or nitrogen? Barium or magnesium? Pause the video until you have an answer. If you think the ionization energy of nitrogen is larger, you're correct. If you think the ionization energy of magnesium is larger, you're correct. Finally, the electronegativity trends. Electronegativity is a measure of the ability of an atom to attract pairs of electrons from another atom to form a covalent bond. From left to right across a period, the electronegativity increases due to the stronger attraction that atoms obtain as the nuclear charge increases. Moving down a group, the electronegativity decreases due to the longer distance between the nucleus and the valence electron shell, which decreases the attraction. Now knowing this trend, which electronegativity is smaller? Fluorine or chlorine? Lithium or beryllium? Pause the video until you have an answer. If you think chlorine's electronegativity is smaller, you're correct. If you think lithium's electronegativity is smaller, you're correct. These are all of the trends that you guys need to know. And remember that these are just trends, not rules. So there are always exceptions. Created using Powtoon.